All right, so in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys my personal feelings and my personal thoughts surrounding this phenomenon that I see kind of taking root in the civil stacking community here on YouTube. I'll give you guys my thoughts about that. And also, we'll talk to my local coin store owner and we'll just talk about the movement of silver. So if you're interested in any of that, stick around. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I want to bring you guys up to date about the Silver Joker channel, Silver Art Bars. They sold out super fast. But I'm going to be releasing another bar, exact same bar, only it won't be serialized and it won't be in the SAC slab. And uh, I'll post that link in a few days and it'll tell you exactly how you can get one of these bars. And once they're gone, they're gone. There'll be no more of these bars. And so here's your last chance to get one of the Silver Joker channel silver bars and either the proof or the antique version of both if you like. All right, so before we go down and talk to Phil, my local coin store owner and a bullion dealer, I just want to share with you guys my thoughts on this subject. Now, I get a lot of questions where people are asking me if I'm part of the silver squeeze and trying to really promote that activity or that movement. I'll tell you this though, to be honest with you, my thoughts on this have changed. So I try to stay out of controversy. You guys know I try to keep my channel kind of neutral because I don't want you to visit my channel based on my politics. I have my strong beliefs about the things that go on around me, but I just think it's inappropriate to share them here. And that's my personal opinion. Having said that, I want to also tell you guys that everything I say about this subject here is my opinion. I'm just going to share with you guys in this video to kind of quell some of the questions that I get surrounding this subject. All right, so first of all, let me just tell you this. To me, silver is not a cause. It is not a movement. Silver is financial security and peace of mind. That's what it means to me. And for the most part, how I view physical silver, unlike its big brother gold, at least until just recently, it's been just quietly doing its job just behind the scenes. And silver's done that since silver records have been kept. Silver's not one of those things out in the forefront. A lot of times us silver stackers were referred to not in the most flattering adjectives. <laughs> so, you know, that's just the that's just the way silver stackers have been viewed. But if you want to make silver into a cause or a movement or even make it something political, then I guess that's really your choice. But here's my personal view. Silver has endured all manner of economic change, social change, and other activities throughout history. Silver has endured these things. And for the most part, it has been a positive light as far as benefiting the people who own it. As far as I can tell, silver has always done what it's supposed to do. So it doesn't need the controversy the movements and the causes. Silver is exactly what it is. Silver can be a benefit for you in a very practical, very simple way. And that is give you some protection to mitigate future inflation. These other things, these other things that surround silver, the silver movements and the silver causes, they are important to people, but silver doesn't have to be a cause in order for it to be important to you. I guess that's really the, the, the point I'm making. Of being able to buy it and really put it away and not worry about it. It always has some value and it will never, never go down to zero. The advantage is it's a world commodity. so. It's not what the business does that you buy it from. It's not what the state that you bought it from does. It's not even the country that you buy it in does. The idea is it's a world commodity. So it's kind of protected by what the world values silver at per ounce.
And there's not really one thing you can point to that really affects silver that much. It is a combination of multiples of different things that affect the price of silver. It's contracts, um, it's things that are written um, in terms of where spot lies, you know, and what people want to, ex the expectation of what you can buy and sell it for, the premiums associated with it, the idea of manufacturing physical silver and getting into this form where you can buy it, take it home and store it. Um, everything leads to the fact of what does it cost to produce something like this? Well, there's costs involved with all of this in terms of, of not just the cost of silver, but the manufacturing, the storing of silver, um, and then now with a lot of the things affecting the price of everything, we have gasoline, expect, you know, mm -hmm. the expectation that that's going to increase the price of everything. You would expect that everything's going to go up in price, but at the same time, if silver goes up in price and everything goes up in price, it's all relative anyway. Absolutely. If you're paying $25 for silver today, the expectation then in 20 years, it should be $125. And chances of that happening, you know, it's, it's anybody's guess, but I would say probably remote. Mm -hmm. So I think the past 20 years is um, a look back period where silver outperformed a lot of different things. Will it continue to perform? And I think that's where a lot of the silver buyers are sitting today. Will it continue to outperform other investments? Well, considering the other investments, I mean, it's it's up to the individual what they you know what they perceive silver is going to be. But at the mm -hmm. same time, what are your other investments that really um, you can put money into? That the expectation would be that they're definitely going to go up. I don't think there's any investment that guarantees anything's going to definitely go up. In right. Value. So, yeah, you can use the argument that silver may not continue on the same trend as maybe in 20 years is going to be worth five times or six times what you paid for it today. But if you can tell me an investment today that's going to be worth six times in 20 years, regardless of what it is, or if you're sure that's going to do that, I'll invest in it today. Yeah, you're my guy. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. Because we just don't know. And right. so we didn't know back in 2000 when, you know, when we had these silver bars on the, you know, on the counter here, nobody was interested in in buying silver at the time, it was four dollars or four fifty an ounce. Mm -hmm. You know, you could buy a ten ounce bar for forty five or fifty five dollars, mm -hmm. and they sat there. Nobody, because silver hadn't moved from the previous twenty years. In the nineteen eighties, we had some fluctuation in right. the silver, but past that, it it stayed fairly stagnant for twelve to fifteen years. So people were not interested in it. Now you look back and you say, well, look what it did the last twenty years. Looking, you know, from today's vantage point. And yes, it's outperformed a lot of different investments. It's outperformed a lot of different things. You could have put the money in back in you know, the turn of the century. However, I think the question with a lot of silver buyers today is will it continue with that performance or has it exhausted itself in terms of right, it's, it's just not gonna grow anymore. Right. So then you're stuck with the point of, well, if it's exhausted itself or it's not gonna grow at five times you know, in the next 20 years, five times its value, what will it grow? Well, then you go back to the inflationary issue. Well, as long as it keeps pace with inflation, as long as it grows even what's inflation right now, I know it's high and it's probably not, yeah. you know, it's probably not going to continue on for the next 20 years. But say inflation is 8%, if this does grow at 5 to 8% a year, it's going to outperform your cash, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, think so it. then the question would be if it's going to outperform cash, because cash is going to lose money with any type of inflationary period as far as buying power, what's your better investment? Well, then you're, again, a speculator at that point. What is your better investment? I don't know what it would be. I can't tell you what a better investment is. Is it comic books? Is it baseball cards? Is it collector cars? Is it stock market? Is it something other than precious metals? Nobody really knows. I mean, if you could take an advance of 25 years from now and look, you know, look at the market and you could certainly answer that question but i don't think anybody's capable of doing that so we just don't know what it's going to do well the bottom line for me always the bottom line for me and i guess we'll kind of end it right here is it is the value that i place on it and not the value that spot price says my silver it's a security you have in it, it security, has some, exactly some right. value down the road and it will have value down the road but you don't have to you don't have to quantify that at this point in time when as you're buying it you don't have to worry about 
quantifying the the purchase price versus what you're going to sell it out in 10 or 15 years from now because we just don't know what we're going to be in 10 or 15 years. Absolutely. And I agree with that. Well, thank you, Phil. I appreciate your time, and, uh, and we'll see if we can uh, get a couple of these bars, maybe. We'll see. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. All right, so there you have it. I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are going to disagree <laughs> with some of the information that was presented in this video, but that's okay. You know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I'm not saying that I have all the answers. I'm just sharing with you guys what I think is beneficial, what works for me. Maybe some of what I say will work for you. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys stopping by. More content coming up. Keep stacking. Peace.